Hello. Tomatoes are fun to grow and, of course, exceptionally delicious to eat. With young plants at the ready, you're just a few weeks away now from enjoying the tastiest fruits you've ever experienced. In this video, we share some ideas for supporting and pruning your tomatoes to ensure a bigger, better harvest. Whether you're growing your tomatoes indoors or out, you'll need to give plants the right type of support. Some tomatoes need more support than others. Cordon types, also known as vining or indeterminate tomatoes, grow to head height and beyond, requiring tall, sturdy supports. On the other hand, bush, or determinate tomatoes, grow up to about three feet or a metre high and therefore require less support. In between are semi-determinate or intermediate types of tall bush tomatoes. Cordon tomatoes can be grown against tall canes or stakes, or in a greenhouse, twisted around string. Firmly secure canes or stakes into the ground so they will hold up against the considerable weight of fruit laden plants and withstand sudden gusts of wind. Push the supports into the ground before planting to avoid damaging the roots. Tie stems at regular intervals to their canes, leaving enough slack for the stem to continue growing in girth. Securing a tie just above a truss will better support the weight of fruits than a tie secured below a truss. Use string or strips of soft material for the ties. Fully loop the tie around the cane before tying in the stem. Cordon tomatoes can also be trained up wigwam structures, one plant to each cane. String supports are easy to set up. Dangle string direct from the greenhouse's framework or from a horizontal length of string secured and stretched taut between the gable ends. Bear in mind the greenhouse will be carrying the entire weight of the plants so it must be strong enough for the job. The string you use should also be stronger than normal garden twine, which can easily snap. Loop the string around the root balls of the tomatoes at planting time to secure the string in place. The string will be further anchored into the soil as the roots grow. As the plants reach up, twist the string around the stem, completing a full loop around the stem every two leaves. When you reach a truss, tuck the string above or behind it, never below it. In theory, bush tomatoes do not need support, but left to their own devices, plants can be weighed down onto the ground by heavy fruits, increasing the chances of slug damage, disease and fruit spoil. Tying plants to sturdy canes will keep them from flopping over. Tomato cages offer fuss-free supports for bush and semi-determinate tomatoes. Buy purpose-made cages or make your own from concrete reinforcing mesh or welded wire mesh such as this. Larger 6 inch or 15 centimetre squares will allow you to easily flex the mesh into a tube to make your cage and offer easy access to your tomatoes. They don't cost much to make and can be reused for many years. Start by cutting a length of mesh 5 to 6 feet long or 150 to 180 centimetres. When rolled into a tube, this will give a cage diameter of 18 to 22 inches or 45 to 55 centimetres. That's tight enough to support a plant while giving it enough room to expand. Use sturdy wire or bolt cutters to make the cuts and wear gloves to protect your hands from snagging cuts. Once cut, carefully roll the length of mesh into a tube. Tie the ends together with heavy gauge wire or string to give a close hold. Now cut off the bottom wire from the cage to leave just the vertical wires sticking out. These wires can be used to push the cage into the ground. For added stability, tie the cage to a vertical length of rebar or similar sturdy upright. You can also pin the bottom wire to the ground with tent pegs. Position your tomato cage by lowering it over the top of a plant. Pull through any stray branches. As the plant grows, encourage growth upwards through the centre of the cage. Fruiting trusses can be left to grow outside of the cage to make picking even easier. At the end of the season, simply unfurl the mesh and store flat to save space. Tomatoes require regular pruning for the best results. This includes pruning trusses to remove excess fruits and removing unproductive lower leaves and side shoots or suckers from cordon tomatoes. Removing developing fruits from trusses may seem counterintuitive, but in warmer climates where growth is especially vigorous, there are a few reasons why you might want to do this. 
First, thinning the fruits within the trusses of prolific fruiters such as cherry tomatoes will ensure those that remain grow larger. For varieties bearing particularly heavy fruits, such as beefsteak tomatoes, thinning fruits to just three per truss will reduce the weight of the truss and make it less likely to snap away from the stem. Prune trusses by snipping off the fruits with sharp scissors while they are still small. Remove all leaves below the lowest ripening trusses of cordon tomatoes. These older leaves will divert the plant's energy away from producing more flowers and fruits while reducing air circulation and light penetration. Remove the leaves by pulling the leaf sharply up, then down so it comes cleanly away from the main stem. Support the stem as you do this. Also known as suckers, side shoots on cordon tomatoes distract the tomato from producing flowers and fruits and must therefore be removed. Side shoots appear at the point where a leaf joins the main stem. Remove them by wiggling them from side to side then using your thumb to snap them out. Remove side shoots while they are still young, working from the bottom of the plant up. It needn't take long to complete these simple pruning and training tasks. It's a once a week job and at the same time you can check on your plants and the progress of your ripening tomatoes. Of course there are lots of other ways of supporting tomatoes. What system do you use? Drop us a comment below and tell us. And if you haven't yet subscribed, be sure to do so for more great gardening tips and advice.